Let me ask you something. Why do some children stay calm, solve problems better, get along with others and bounce back after a setback? It's not just IQ, it's EQ. That's emotional quotient or emotional intelligence. And here's a surprising truth. Your child is not born with emotional intelligence. Their brain learns it through you, through everyday moments, through small interactions that happen at home. So today, let's break down what neuroscience actually tells us about growing emotional intelligence and five simple habits any parent can start right away. I am Dr. Arif Khan and welcome to The Brain Project. Habit number one, name emotions out loud. When a child feels something big, their amygdala, the emotional alarm center, becomes highly active. The brain gets flooded and they don't yet have the pathways to understand what's happening to them. This is where you step in. A famous UCLA study found that when we put feelings into words, the amygdala comes down and the prefrontal cortex becomes active. This is called effect labeling. So when you say, you're feeling frustrated because the tower fell or you're not just soothing them. You're helping their brain build emotional clarity and regulation. Kids who hear more emotion words develop stronger emotional vocabulary. Naming emotions is not babying, it's brain training. Now, habit number two, validate before correcting. You can't teach regulation when a child's nervous system is overwhelmed. Research shows that children whose parents consistently validate their feelings develop stronger emotional regulation circuits. Validation sounds like this. I see you're upset. That must have felt disappointing or it makes sense that you feel nervous. This doesn't mean you approve the behavior. It simply means you're acknowledging the emotion beneath it. When your children feel understood, their cortisol level drops, their reasoning improves and they become open to learning. So emotions first, lesson second. Habit number three, coach emotions. Don't control them. Dr. John Gottman's long-term research found the parents who coach emotions raise kids with better self-regulation, fewer behavioral issues, stronger social skills, and better academic performance. Emotion coaching follows five simple steps. Number one, notice the emotion. Number two, pause instead of reacting. Number three, help your child label the feeling. Number four, set limits for behavior. And finally, number five, guide them to a solution. What you're really doing is building neural pathways for planning, problem solving, and also emotional control. You're teaching their brain, I can feel big things and still choose how to act. Now, habit number four, model your own emotional regulation. Kids watch more than they listen. Your regulations become their regulations. Your reactions set the blueprint for their nervous system. I'm feeling stressed. I need a moment. When you apologize after losing your patience, you're demonstrating emotional intelligence in action. Their mirror neuron system absorbs what you show far more than what you tell. Finally, habit number five, teach problem solving, not perfection. Emotional intelligence isn't about avoiding difficult feelings. It's about learning how to move through them. You build this through small everyday moments. Your toy broke, what can we try? You're mad about your sister taking your marker away. What are two things we can do? You're nervous about school? Let's make a plan together. Each problem solved strengthens the connection between emotional areas and planning areas of the brain. Every small win builds that confidence in your child. So what does all this mean? Emotional intelligence isn't a fixed personality trait. It's a skill, a network of neural connections shaped by a relationship with your child. And here are your five brain building habits. None of these require perfection, none require money, they only need presence. When you help build emotional intelligence, you're not just raising a well-behaved child, you're raising a child who understands themselves, a child who can handle frustration, communicate clearly, think under stress, and form healthy relationships. You're building a brain that's ready for life. I'm Dr. R. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.